welcome back to BeHookedCrochet.com. I'm your host, Brittany, and in today's tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how to crochet the Karen Cakes Cowl. This is a free pattern that's available at BeHookedCrochet.com, and you can get the link to that pattern in the description below this video. To complete your cowl, you're going to need one Karen Cake in the colorway of your choice. I'll be using the color Fairy Cake, and you'll also need a size 5mm crochet hook. To begin our Karen Cakes cowl, we just want to take one of the ends. Now you can work from the outside of your Karen Cake or you can work from the center. Really it's important to determine which color you're going to work with because that's going to determine what the pattern looks like in your cowl. So we're going to be working from the center of the triangle outward. So whatever side or whatever color you choose, which end to pull from on your cake, that's going to be the color that's at the very center of your cowl. So with that in mind, create your slip knot and then place that loop on your hook. And we're going to be working in forward and backward rows here. So we're going to start off our cowl by just creating a few stitches and then we're going to build upon that by flipping it back and forth each way. So no rounds here, but our rows do look a little bit different than normal because we're working in a triangle. So the first thing we want to do is make four chains. And these four chains are going to count as one double crochet. So three chains counts as a double crochet. And then we're going to make a fourth chain. And that fourth chain is going to act as our centerpiece to start out the triangle pattern. So we have the first, second, and third chain as representing our double crochet, and then we have our last chain there next to the slip knot that's going to work as our center. So from here we want to make six more double crochets into that very first chain that we created. And you can go into one loop or two loops, doesn't really matter. So once you have finished up this first row, your work should now look something like this. It's starting to resemble a triangle. So we have our flat edge here, and then our point is going to be right in this stitch here. So this is how you can sort of visualize how this pattern is going to come together. We're just going to build row after row, and it's going to kind of build out that way. So at this point, we should have a total of seven double crochet stitches, including that first chain. So go ahead and count those. Make sure you have seven. And after you've confirmed that, then we're ready to begin row two. So the pattern repeat for this cow is very simple. It only consists of two different rows that we'll be repeating as we work through this cow. And so we're going to start our first row of the pattern repeat with row two. We want to chain three, and that's going to count as one double crochet, and then we'll just turn our work. So we're looking at it now on the opposite side, and we want to locate the stitch where our chain is coming from. So that would be this stitch right here. And we want to make two double crochets into that stitch. Now we have a total of three double crochets that are now coming from that same stitch. And the reason why we're putting those there is because this is adding an increase so that way our cowl stays at a triangular shape and this flat side of it will stay flat, you know, just that. If we add fewer than three stitches then it will start to kind of go inward as we work through. 
So three is the magic number. Now we want to make a double crochet into each of the next two stitches. So no increases here, just following this side of the triangle. Now we've reached the center point of the triangle and you've noticed by seeing the pictures of this cowl that we have puff stitches that sort of look like little buttons that go all the way down the pattern. And we're going to be working a puff stitch in our very next stitch, but before we do that we need to chain one. So we'll chain one and then to make a puff stitch you want to yarn over, insert your hook in that next stitch, yarn over, pull through and just pull up kind of far on that stitch. Now we'll do that again, and again, and one more time. We want this puff stitch to be nice and full. So we've done that motion of wrapping and pulling through four times. Then you'll yarn over, pull through all the loops on your hook, and then the final step to finish off the puff stitch is to make a chain. So that seals things off. And to keep things symmetrical, we need to now add a chain that'll match this chain over here. And then we'll just make a double crochet into each of the next two. And one more time. Now we should have one stitch remaining and it's our chain. And we don't have a typical V to work into like we did for these stitches here. But what we want to do is just work our next few stitches into this very last chain, this top chain right here. And I like to just work in, in one of the loops, it's just fine. And we're going to make three double crochets into this chain. This is going to match the increase on the other side and make sure that everything stays symmetrical and our top edge stays flat. Now that finishes row two. Now to begin row three, just keep in mind that this is the second row of our repeat. So we're going to begin by making three chains and then turn our work and then make two double crochets in that same stitch. So this part is just the same as our last row. The only difference you're going to see in these two rows is how we handle the point up here where that puff stitch is. So we're going to treat that a little bit differently here. Now we're going to make a double crochet into each of the next four stitches. So each one of these four double crochets, make a double crochet stitch. Now we need to make a double crochet in this chain one space. So you don't have to work in the chain or anything like that, just work it around. And now we need to make three double crochets into this puff stitch. And we're making our three double crochets in order to continue increasing so that our point it has the right shape to it but we're creating this point in a slightly different way than normal because when we create a point with a chain then as you can see here we have a little opening and that's not what we were going for with this design so you'll just make your three double crochets into that puff stitch and now just work the mirror image of what we did over on this side. Double crochet in that chain one space, one double crochet into each of the next four stitches,
And now we'll locate our last stitch, which again is going to be our chain. We want to work three double crochets into that top chain to finish off row three. So row four is going to start our pattern repeat. So we're going to work over. We're going to start off with this puff stitch row. And just to help yourself identify it, think puff stitch row, solid double cro crochet row. Then we're going to do a puff stitch row and a solid double crochet row. So to begin row four, make your three chains and turn your work. And make two double crochets into your first stitch. And now one double crochet into each of the next nine. So this little section here is going to be what changes on every row. The number of stitches that you're working here is going to be slightly different because we're increasing. So we're making this triangle bigger, but the motions are exactly the same. The stitch that you want to look out for is the one that's at the very point. And we'll talk about this when we get there. But those three double crochets that we made in our puff stitch. Now it might be beneficial for you if you are having trouble seeing the stitches or visualizing the stitches is taking a stitch marker and marking that middle stitch. So these are the three that I made in the puff stitch. I have my stitch marker and the one that's in the middle because that's the important one. I want to stop double crocheting into each stitch when I get to this stitch marker. So I've worked double crochets all along this edge here. I've reached my stitch marker so we can pull that out. And before we make a puff stitch, we always want to chain one. So just chain one, and then we're gonna make a puff stitch into our next stitch. And doing so with wrapping four times three and four. Now yarn over and pull through all of those loops and then just make a chain to finish it off. And now just work down the other side. Chain one, work in the very next stitch. We're not skipping a stitch when we make these chains. It's part of our increase. So we just want to locate the next stitch and make a double crochet. We want to do this all the way down until we've reached our last stitch, which again is going to be a chain, so that chain three. Then once you have just your chain remaining there, you'll make three double crochets in that top chain. And now that finishes row four. 
Now beginning row five, let's go ahead and determine which one of these repeats it is. So we just finished our puff stitch row, and so that tells us that our next row is going to be a solid double crochet row. So we're going to begin by making three chains and turning our work, and then make two double crochets into that same stitch. And again, that chain three is counting as a stitch, and that's how we can determine that there are actually three stitches coming from this one stitch rather than just the two that we're making. Now we'll make a double crochet into our chain one space there. And remember, every time we get to a puff stitch, we're going to make three double crochets into that stitch. And if you're using stitch markers, now would be a good time to place it. So you make your first one, and then make your second double crochet, and then add your stitch marker to that second one because this is going to be the middle stitch and you don't have to do this this is just a a nice visual cue it's easier for you to just work off of seeing this rather than counting your stitches every row so now we'll just repeat all the way down double crochet into your chain one space and then one double crochet into all of the stitches down And then once you have reached your last stitch here, that chain three, go ahead and make three double crochets into that top chain. And that finishes row five. So let's just talk for a minute about these Karen Cakes yarn and how these color transitions happen. So when you're looking at it from the top side here, it really does look like we have this ombre or this gradual change from one color to the next. But when you pinpoint where these transitions occur, then you'll notice that it is a sharp transition. So it just jumps immediately one color to the next. And this transition is a little bit harder to tell because we have this kind of a medium color blue that's jumping right into this lighter color blue. And on the white background, you can see exactly where that transition occurs. Now you can either use this as a way to create interest for your cowl. You can just go with it. Just wherever the transitions happen, let it happen. If it happens in the middle of the cowl, then you can go with it. If it happens up here at the end, then that's fine too. But some of you might 
really like a more of a striped pattern. So you would maybe like for all of your color transitions to happen up at the edge so that you can start your new color just right from the beginning. And that's fine. You can do so by trimming your yarn and kind of planning how these color changes occur. So you would keep an eye on how much yarn you have left over in this colorway. In my instance here, I've got just this little bunch right there. So I have enough yarn to work another row, keeping it all this same color. And then if I wanted to go ahead and start my new color from the very beginning, I would fasten off once I get to the end of row six here, just in my case, because this is the lot number of yarn that I'm working with, then I would fasten off and then I would start again where this color transition occurs. So then I'm starting on this next color. So you can do that, or like I said, you can just go with it. Just let it happen. It's not as noticeable. If you're using the fairy cake when you're working, when you're transitioning from the the light, the medium blue that I have here to the lighter blue and even the lighter blue to the, like there's this green sort of like a seafoam color in there you can't really see that but where it really becomes noticeable is where we have this like white color that's right next to the dark blue and so if that happens somewhere in the middle of your cowl it is going to be noticeable so you can just plan it as you go if you're a beginner and you're just learning this technique honestly I would just let it go just let the yarn do its thing and create the pattern for you so at this point we have gone through the entire repeat for this cowl and everything is just repeated until we reach the end of our cake so if you're working on the cowl, it is sort of a petite sized cowl and one Karen cake is going to do. If you want a larger cowl, then I would suggest having two Karen cakes and you can even turn this into a shawl, make it even bigger so that way it'll drape over your shoulders and kind of down your arms a little bit. I would suggest using three Karen cakes for that size. So what I need for you to do at this point is just repeat our two rows where we have our puff stitch row and then our solid double crochet row. Just to repeat that over and over and it's going to get bigger and bigger and you'll notice it's going to keep and maintain this sort of soft triangle shape. We do have like a softer corner here and this back side should continue to say stay straight. If you notice it changing in any way then you might want to check your stitches on the end. Make sure you're maintaining your stitch count. So go ahead and finish that up. If you're working on your petite size, then just work through your single cake. If you're doing the larger size, work through two. The shawl size, work through three. Then you're going to come back to this video and we'll talk about the finishing touches, how to fasten off, and then we're going to add a couple of tassels to each one of the points. So this is another cowl that I have been working up as well. And I, did, I played with the color transitions a little bit on this one for demonstrational purposes. So I wanted to draw your attention to right here and right here. And like I said, these colors are so close to each other that the transition is almost unnoticeable. But I went ahead and left this transition in and you can see that it's mid row and you really can't tell much of a difference, especially when you're working with this colorway where the colors are so close to each other. But I did mention that there is a section of the pattern where the yarn goes from this white color all the way to the darkest blue. And that was gonna happen in the very middle of this section. And so what I did in order to prevent that from happening because the, the color transition was very obvious and it kind of fell in a really funny place on the yarn. So I wanted to demonstrate just how I did this all I did was fasten off, acted like I was done, and then I pulled from a different section of this Karen cake in order to stay consistent with this almost white color, and then you'll see that it eventually transitioned back to this lighter green, and then the blue, and then on down to the dark blue. So this is an option, it's something that you can do in order to control your color transitions, or like I said, in some cases it really won't matter, you won't see it very much, so you can just let the transitions occur naturally where they are in the skein or in the Karen cake. 
And so we'll, we'll go ahead and finish our demonstration with this cow, the one that I have previously worked up and almost have it completed. Just know that it's the same as the cow that we started working on to demonstrate this technique. So I have finished crocheting all of my rows. I have a total of 34 rows for this smaller size or the petite size cow, the one that just uses one cake. And depending on the size that you're going to make, you may end up with a different number of rows. Again, I have 34 rows, but you want to make sure no matter what the case that you end up on your puff stitch row. So you want to stop once you're close to your end, to the end of your cake, to whether which side you're work, which size you're working on. And then you'll finish your row, and then we're simply just going to fasten off. So trim your yarn, pull the tail through the loop on your hook, and that will fasten off. Now all that's left to do is we need to weave in our ends, and then we also are going to add a couple of tassels. Now you want to weave in your ends on what you want to be the wrong side of the work. Now you probably have noticed that there's really not much of a difference from one side or the other. I would just go ahead and pick the side that you think looks the neatest. So I think this side looks pretty good. The puff stitches are a lot more pronounced on this side of the work. So I'm just going to say that this is the right side and then begin weaving in my tails on the back side. So I'll just demonstrate this very quickly. You'll use your darning needle and it's best to weave in these tails at the base of your stitches. And I'm going to try to keep it within this color just because there is a bit of a contrast from this color blue to that color. And so I'm just going to work it down that double crochet stitch because it was up there on the top and then just work it into this row here. And you'll try to get your needle under five or six stitches, a little bit more if you can, and work it through. And don't be too worried about getting it perfectly underneath each one of the strands. It actually stays in better if we break them up and kind of go inside the strands. So once you pull it through, just reverse and then weave it in going the other direction and you can even do that one more time so that you know it is absolutely secure and then just trim off this extra now go ahead and repeat that for the other areas if you had to join your skeins or if you cut like I did here also at the very beginning. Go ahead and weave in all your ends and then we'll talk about adding the tassels. The last thing that we need to do to finish our cowls or our shawls is make three of these little tassels and these are going to be little accents that go on each of the three points. So I'm going to demonstrate how to make one of these tassels now. You're going to need a couple supplies. In order to make the tassels, we have to have something to wrap around. And I found that a little stack of post-it notes, just a little stack that you have, doesn't have to be a full one, actually works really well. It's the perfect size for this cowl. If you don't have a thing of post-it notes available, you can cut a piece of cardboard that's about two and a half to three inches long. And so just know that however wide your cardboard is, or in this case, my little post-it notes, that's how long our tassel is going to be. Okay, so you can make yours bigger or smaller if you'd like. For now, I'm going to demonstrate using this post-it note. So we're going to take our yarn and then we just want to fold that top part just over the top and secure it with your finger. And then you just want to begin wrapping. And depending on the material that you're using, you want to be careful not to wrap it too tight. In my case, post notes are kind of flexible. So I want to make sure I am not bending my post it note or my cardboard or whatever tool that you're using in order to wrap your yarn around because that's going to make your tassels different sizes. Now 
the amount of wraps that you put on your post-it note here or whichever piece of material you're using, that's going to be how thick your tassel is. And if you want them to be exactly the same, you could count how many times that you're wrapping. That way you can make them the exact same size. Otherwise, you can sort of eyeball it. Just keep wrapping until you think you have enough. You can kind of gauge how thick it's going to be by looking at it from the side. So I'll go a couple more times. And then once you're finished, then we're just going to lay it down and trim this on the bottom. So I started up here with my loose end. Now I'm going to trim it down at the bottom. And then just keep that steady and don't let it come unwrapped. And now make a cut of yarn that's about three to four inches. And this is going to serve as the little piece up on the top. That's going to be how we secure it to our cows. So without letting it come unwrapped, just go ahead and slide this new strand underneath and kind of shimmy it all the way up to the top. And then tie yourself a knot. And you'll pull it pretty tight. You want it to sort of come together like you just saw there. Be careful not to break your yarn. and then just leave that in place. Now we can slide it off of our post-it notes. And just lay it down and make yourself another cut of yarn. This time make it about four inches or so and then place it underneath your tassel. This is going to be the little section that pinches it right here. So I am just demonstrating with one wrap. You can wrap this around a few times to get a, like a thicker appearance, a thicker belt sort of thing. Then you'll just place it around and tie it off. And before you pull too tight, you can adjust the positioning of it. So it's actually pretty close to the other one. So I can go ahead and pull tight and then tie it off. Now, if you wanted to wrap it around, you could at this point take one of the edges and then just wrap a couple of times. So that way it's, see how you have like a thicker Line. I'm going to keep it just one. And you may want to tie this knot two or three times just so you're sure it's secure. This is going to be one of the pieces that holds it together. And then we can just trim off the extra. And the last thing we want to do is trim off these little ends. So you will have to get it all in order and even. You can slide your finger in there and then just take your scissors and trim it off. And that's all there is to it. These are really easy to make. They do make tassel makers. Um, Clover has them and they are really, really great tool. I personally don't have one of those. So if you have just a couple of little supplies at home, like I said, post-it note, piece of cardboard, anything will work. Go ahead and make three little tassels that are as close to the same size as you can get them. And then come back and I'll show you how to add them to your cows. So once you have all three of your tassels made, we're just simply going to use these two strands from the top and tie them onto each point. So I find it easiest if we just insert our hook into a stitch there and then just sort of wrap that around your hook and pull it through. Then we just want to tie this in a knot. 
you can knot it a couple times make sure it's secure and now you can either trim these off or you could even go as far as to weave them in that way they'll be hidden and so you just want to repeat that for the other corners so finding this point here we're going to insert it directly into the puff stitch And then our final corner, again, this one is going to be the chain. So I would still insert your hook into the chain. Pull that strand through. Now, as I said, you can trim these off or you can weave them in. And so at this point, our cows are completely finished. So just take care of those ends and you're ready to go. This concludes our tutorial today on the Karen Cakes cow. And there are so many great colorways in this yarn that I would love to see how your cows look. I've just been working on this fairy cake color, but I'm really excited to see how some of the other colorways are going to work up. So as you're working through your pattern on Instagram and Facebook, use hashtag Karen Cake Cowl. That way I can take a look through the hashtag and see what you all are up to. I do recommend you check out Yarnspirations.com. They have a full list of free patterns that are available using specifically their yarn. So if you like Yarnspirations yarn, so we have Karen Peyton's and Burnett. If you're a fan of any of those yarns, you have some in your stash and you're looking for a way to use them, check out their website, yarnspirations.com, and you can find a pattern that's specifically for the yarn in your stash. Now on behalf of BeHookedCrochet.com, as well as our sponsor, Yarnspirations, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, and I hope you finish your cow and that you'll share it with me on social media. Until next time, we'll see you soon.